Back and hip stuff. That all sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Well, I think today we will start as we often start, just shaking it off. Welcome, everybody. Last outdoor class for a while. <laughs> kind of can't handle it, but at the same time, I'm kind of excited about Halloween and the end of the year and everything. So, try to just stay excited. Brian is midway transformed into Neptune for his Halloween costume. Oh, and so it's a process. The luscious green and blue locks yes. of today. And then, you know, feel free to bounce as you want to bounce. If you're feeling really like, oh, I can't get off the floor today, you could even hop in place a little bit. Or if you're feeling a little too in your head and reading too much news, you can just kind of shake it on down. And yes, you can also bounce and twist because we're going to get into that anyway. <laughs> Because it's so wonderful. So keeping the feet maybe about, I'd say like two feet apart, not with distance, something like that. And we're just kind of going side to side, shaking the body, shaking our arms, shaking everything. Eventually, we'll ground into our feet and just start twisting back and forth. A good one too. And then from here, when you're ready, we'll get into the Tibetan twist that you guys have seen so much of us. Inhale to the right, exhale to the left, making the sound with the arms up at chest height like swimming water. Welcome. And then you can turn the arms up. Hello. Same thing. Hey. Inhaling right, exhaling left. And then taking the arms down like we are manually turning a hula hoop. Same thing. Inhale to the right, exhale to the left. All right, so we'll slowly come back to center. You know what? Let's actually do a little bit more twisting. So we're going to step the feet out a little wider, maybe point them out at about a 45 degree angle, and we're going to bend into the you knees. You guys want to well? I have two left and I'm giving We're going to put our hands just above the knees on our inner thighs here. We're going to squat down, take a deep inhale in the middle. And on an exhale, we'll straighten one arm as we twist to the one side. Inhaling back through center. Exhale, pressing to the other arms, twisting to the other side. So we're just going back and forth, inhaling through the center, exhaling as we twist. Ooh, yeah, I've got some good block stuff we can do right after. Perfect. Next time you come to center, let's stay here, but let's turn our feet out so that they're parallel and take them fairly wide. And this is a nice chance for you to use your blocks <laughs> that we have. You can use just one for this too. So either with two blocks like this or one block like this, we'll just try a nice flat back here for a second. So you can use the block to kind of give you that extra boost. It can be at the highest height or at a medium height or at the lowest height, but whatever you need to kind of just sort of lengthen through the spine here. And when you're ready, you can put the left hand on the block or on your left block, and we'll inhale the right arm up for another twist, just a, a static twist. We're just gonna hold still here for a second. Breathing deep, reaching up at that ominous gray sky. And then when you're ready, we'll replace the left hand with the right hand, putting the right hand down on the block or blocks, 
inhaling the left arm up, lengthening through the spine as well as through the arms. And then when you're ready, both hands can come back down to the blocks or the block. And then from here, if you wanna bend elbows and start folding forward, that's one option. If you feel comfortable with this, you can actually walk the hands back, either keeping them on blocks or just bringing them to the mat. And we'll fall forward just a little bit more. Knees can be a little bent here if you like, or straight, either way. And then using the blocks again, let's walk the, our hands over to the right side of our mat. And you can put the block the blocks on either side of your foot if you're using just one so we're turning our feet mm, we're going to turn our feet so we're facing the right side of the mat and we're in a low lunge here if you're using just one just i'd say use it on the left side and maybe just put the right hand on the right knee that's fine if you're using two one under each hand so we're here in a lunge with blocks framing our front foot steve you can bring your, your front foot out just another foot or so just the front foot yes that's great perfect and then from here, let's bring the left knee down. So here we are in this low crescent lunge. Again, blocks are helpful here for keeping my spine nice and long, but they're also helpful for this next movement. So here we are in this crescent lunge with our heart open, shining up. Let's walk the hips, well, let's move the hips back. Hands are still on the blocks here, and this is called half split. For some of us, you might have really flexible hamstrings and you won't need the blocks. For me, I like to have them here as something to hold on to as I lean forward over that extended front leg. And if you're using one block, just put it next to your foot. You can put both hands on it and lean forward over that. Then from here, this is the hard part. I'm gonna move both my blocks to the outside of my right foot. So they're on the right side of my right wow. foot. Definitely a bit of a challenge here because it's just diagonal stretch. I'm gonna lean towards the blocks. They're kind of at two o'clock if my right foot is midnight. And then we'll just bring the blocks back to maybe the left side of our mat. We'll come back up to our lunge, walk the hands around towards the left, and then frame that left foot with the blocks. And we'll do the same thing, starting with a high lunge here. You can even use the blocks to keep your, your body nice and long. And then when you're ready, we'll bring that right knee down to the mat. Again, using the blocks to give us some support as we stretch into that left hip, kind of intense. Then from here, same thing, we'll walk the hips back, extending that left leg. You can keep the blocks under your hands as you lean forward over that left leg for half split. So when your family says, what did you do in yoga today? You say, oh, I did splits. <laughs> then from here, come back up. What did we do from here? We just come back up. Oh, we did the sideways thing. Will you teach that real quick? I want to check the live stream. Oh, you can lean back into, um. Lean back in the half split again, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then you put both blocks on the outside, outside of, the of your left leg. So let's pin this, there we go. Now you can see us, I hope. Yay. Great. I'll even work on pulling this left hip sort of back in space. And you should probably feel a pretty intense stretch down the side of the left leg. Like we have a sort of C-shaped curve in our spine as we lean to the left and the block should be kind of pointing towards like 10 o'clock <laughs> if the left leg is midnight. And then when you're ready, you can just put the blocks to the side. We'll walk forward into our lunge, bring the right foot back down again, walking forward again to this wide legged stretch. Inhaling deeply here, maybe holding onto the block, keeping the spine nice and long. Exhale completely. And then let's toe heel the feet closer together, like maybe about three feet apart. And we'll move the block out of the way. We'll interlace the fingers with both hands. 
and slowly let's inhale the arms up above the head standing up drawing the hips forward just a little bit exhale fold forward and chop wood like this ha, ha. so it's a dynamic movement like this inhaling up exhaling ha. and we'll just continue like this for a minute ha, and then next time you fold forward, feel free to just stay folded forward here. And we'll put the heels of the hands right at the hip crease here. So right where, when I bend my knees and fold forward a little, my hips fold forward through here some. So the heels of the hands are all the way there. I'm gonna push down on my thighs to inhale my spine nice and long, curling up and then exhaling, folding forward like this. Ha! Again, if you wanna make noise, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. Inhaling up, exhaling. <laughs> I'll just do a few more, inhaling up, exhaling, last two, inhaling, last one, and exhale, and then from here we'll just fold forward, nice forward fold, you can bring the feet a little closer together here if you want, you can bend the knees or you can use the blocks to bring the earth to you in your forward fold like this. That's fine. And then when you're ready, we'll just roll all the way up to standing, shake it off a bit. And let's warm up the hips a little bit. That's great. You want to fix the hips up? Yeah, so we're going to stand, take a pretty wide stance on your mat. Um, and we're just gonna roll through the hips. So we're like making uh, hula hoop uh, hips, making big O's with our hips. Lubricating the hips. <clears throat> and then when you feel like it, you can switch the direction that you're drawing your circles in. And then we'll come back to center and oh and um we'll do figure eights so you can keep the feet stepped out still a little wide you can bring them in a little bit if you want and we're going to make figure eights with the hips so it's like you take one hip forward and back and then you take the other one forward and back so just going very side nice. to side very nice This movement sometimes is a little hard to make sense of because it's a movement not all of us are super familiar with or used to. So one thing that I find actually for me in doing this that helps me to understand this movement is to incorporate my arms and do some back stroking. So my arms are kind of leading my hips back. It's like my arms are attached to my hips, which I guess technically they are. And, uh, Eventually. I'm just, yeah, after a fashion, my arms and my hips connect. And from here, it's just a sort of backstroke that leads you back. It's like you're swimming. You might get a little in your head from this. You might get a little dizzy. So feel free if you need a break to just shake it off or look down. And when you're ready, we'll try the other way. So this time, it's like we're taking our, we're starting with the hip back and then bringing it forward. And same thing. Inside. Again, might be kind of an unfamiliar movement or not make any sense at all, in which case feel free this time to swim. Swim forward. It might even be that you find that just standing still and swimming, your hips start to move with you at this point. And honestly, if this movement makes no sense to you, it doesn't matter because you're moving and that's what matters. <laughs> The idea being that we're just keeping some fluidity in the spine. Like as I do this, you'll see my spine kind of like 
snake back and forth like an S. That's what we're aiming for here, is just to keep those spines happy so we don't have to worry too much about angry spine issues. And then when you're ready, we'll just shake it all off again. You want to start? Yeah, you want to try it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll open up the arms a little bit. We're going to get some opening all along the arm. So we'll tuck the thumbs into the palms, curl the four fingers around with nice, long, straight arms. We're going to rotate the wrists with making circles as wide as you can with those wrists. Keeping the shoulders relaxed down, but the arms nice and long, we're going to start to move the arms up overhead, reaching long. When you get to the top, go ahead and just take them, the arms down the front of the body. And then when you get to the bottom, switch the direction that you're drawing your circles. And now we'll take the arms up the front and down the side. When you get to the bottom, you can just open up your hands and flap out your arms a little bit, shake them out. Getting some motion into the elbow joints. We'll do tuck the thumbs into the palms again, curl the four fingers around, take the arms out into a T. Relax our shoulders, and like we have uh, like our forearms or two airplane propellers facing straight forward, we're going to just rotate a few times in one direction. And then switch the direction. Let's take it to that level. Take it to the level. Take it to that All level. All right. So we're going to go a little further with this. We're going to point the airplane <laughs> propellers straight up at the sky. So this time the arms, we're still doing the same motion, but this time we're facing the arms up. But try to keep those shoulders relaxing down the back. So shoulders are turning, or the arms are turning upwards, but the shoulders are staying relaxed. Switch direction. Breathe deep. And then we're going to take these airplane propeller arms and face them at the earth. So elbows out to the side, but shoulders relaxed. And like we're stirring two pots of soup on either side of the body, we'll do it a few times in one direction. And then switch the direction. Arms should be getting pretty official. Uh, yeah. Live, feeling Your pretty lively are by now. Feeling very present. So let's let's take the arms, open up the arms, and just relax them. Yeah, you can waggle them out, kind of turning the palm face forward, face back quickly, side to side, loose elbow, loose shoulder. Yep, totally loosening everything up. We are going to do one more arm thing, and then we'll leave here looking like the rock. So I updated my looking like it used to be Hulk Hogan, but nobody knows who that is anymore. So arms out in T, and we'll do just little circles, spiraling out to bigger and bigger circles till you find your arms crossing in front of you that big. And then arms back out on T again, palms face down, little circles the other way, spiraling and spiraling out to bigger and bigger circles, maybe crossing at the wrists. Then arms out in the T, palms face up, same thing. Just this time our palms are face up, so that really does help us keep our shoulders down here. Again, spiraling out to bigger circles across in front of you. And then last but not least, arms in the T, spiraling those circles the other way. Crossing at the wrists. And then again, we'll just shake it off, shake the arms, shake the body, shake everything. That was official. <laughs> My arms are alive now. And um, what else can we do while we're standing? I kind of want to do leg stuff on the ground and use the blocks and everything on the ground too. Mm -hmm. So let's do, um, let me think if there's any other block thing I want to do while we're standing up. Yeah, let's do a sun salutation with blocks as well and some lunges. And I'll show you what to do with that. So if you have two blocks, put them on either side of what you feel like might be the front of your mat. And uh, if you have one block, just put it at the front of your mat. It'll be there for you when you need it. And we'll come standing at the front of the mat here. Maybe feet hips width distance. We'll do a little traditional sun salutation that will flow into a little bit of standing stuff with the block so you can just have that experience, the block experience. So we'll inhale arms up high above the head. Exhale, folding forward, swan diving down to a forward fold again. 
You can put your hands on the blocks here if you want for your folder, forward fold, bringing the earth to you if need be. And then we'll actually place the hands on the ground on either side of the feet and let's walk the feet back to a plank. You can either stay here in regular plank with the knees up, or you can bring the knees down and do half plank. Either way, when you're ready, we'll come down either through chaturanga, which Brian will demonstrate, or uh, knees, chest, chin, which I'll show you real quick. It looks like this. On an exhale, I come down, my chest and my chin are down, but my hips are still up here. From here, I'm gonna inhale up to a low cobra, so my heart is really shining up here. And then I'm gonna exhale, coming back down, tucking the toes, coming through hands and knees. My hips rise up to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, let's lift our right leg so that it's hip height. It doesn't have to go super duper high, just parallel to the hips. And then let's draw the right knee in towards the chest and travel that right foot all the way up between the hands. If you need to take the right hand and walk the right foot forward with that, that's fine. And then from here, hands can come again to blocks on either side of your foot or a block in front of you so that we can keep a nice long line from the crown of my head all the way down to my left heel. At this point, mm, yeah, let's do track. So at this point, Let's ground down that left foot. So I'm gonna bring the left heel down and turn my left toes out about 45 degrees. So it's at an angle for the right foot. And I'm gonna come all the way up to this standing warrior one. Traditional Western yoga pose. You can bring the left arm down if you want, just to make sure the hips are even and they aren't opening out to the left. Arms come back up. Let's straighten through the front leg, that's the right leg. And we'll take that left foot back just a little bit so my right heel can intersect the middle of my left foot. We're gonna come in the triangle. So now I'm facing the left side of my mat. <laughs> you might want to turn around for this one. So you're gonna turn the hips to the side. Yes, yeah, so you want your hips to the side here and I'm gonna reach out long knowing that my block is there for me, my old friend. And then come into triangle. So my hand can rest on a block on the outside of my right foot here. As I open my heart up towards the sky, keeping length through both the right and left sides of the body. And then if you're comfortable bringing the hand to the ground, you can do that, or to the shin, you can do that. But really, the block is so great, why not? And then from here, left hand can come down to the block on the other side of your right foot. And we'll draw that left foot in just a little bit for pyramid posture. So my legs, this time, my feet are parallel to each other, but it's like I'm standing on train tracks. So there's a little bit of distance between where the right foot is falling towards the right of the mat and the left foot is towards the left. I'm gonna come up to standing here. This is pyramid pose. And I'm gonna grab for opposite elbows behind my back like this. If you're one of those people that can do hidden prayer, which is a challenge for me, like that, Feel free, either grabbing opposite elbows or hidden prayer. We're gonna inhale and look up at the sky for stargazer, so appropriately named. And then we're gonna exhale and holding forward from the hips. So I'm really drawing back through my hips as I come forward. I'm gonna find my trusty block or blocks and rest my hands on them. With a nice straight spine here and folded pyramid and then when you're ready feel free to bend the elbows and let the spine curve over the front leg in this case the right leg so getting a deep stretch on the back of the right leg at this point feel free to bend the right knee we'll move the blocks to the side of the mat or actually you could kind of toss them to the back of your mat if you want that's fine we'll bring the palms down Bring, come up onto the toes of the right foot. We'll step the left foot back, coming back into our plank. Again, your choice whether to do a chaturanga or knees, chest, and chin. I'll show chaturanga. Brian will show knees, chest, and chin. So on your next exhale, come on down. And then we'll come all the way down to our bellies and inhale up into cobra again. You could go a little higher this time 
Or you can try upward facing dog where the hips actually come off of the ground. And then when you're ready, hips come back down. You tuck the toes, coming through hands and knees, lifting through the hips on an exhale. Come on back to downward facing dog for the other side. And you know what? I totally apologize for telling you to throw your blocks behind you. We need them up front. So sorry about that. The blocks are needed in the bridge. So bring them up to the front of your mat. We'll come back to our downward facing dog. Breathing deep. And then let's inhale that left leg up about hip height, parallel to the ground. Bending the left knee will draw it in towards the chest. And then either taking your left hand to walk the left foot in between your hands or just bringing the left foot in between your hands. We'll bring the blocks under the hands again, any height you like, small, medium, large, or not at all. And we'll inhale the spine nice and long, coming up a little bit into our low lunge here. There should be a nice long line from the top of my head to the back of my right heel. From here, I'm gonna bring my right heel down to the mat and turn my right foot out towards the right at a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna inhale all the way up for warrior one on the other side. To check and make sure that my right hip isn't opening up too much to the right, I'm gonna bring my right arm down in front of me, drawing that right hip forward, inhaling back up. And then I'm gonna turn around so you can see what I'm doing. From here, let's open the hips now straighten the left leg and then make sure that the left heel is going to intersect the middle of the right foot so the right foot is actually parallel to the back of the mat here left foot is perpendicular to or the front of the mat here left foot is perpendicular to the back of the mat. arms come out into a t we'll reach over that left side legs are straight maybe a slight micro bend in the knees but that's all you need and we'll bring a hand down to a block maybe on the inside or the outside of that left foot. Keeping the spine nice and long, keeping both sides of the body nice and long. You guys look great. Looking up at the sky. And then when you're ready, we'll exhale that right hand down to your other block. And we'll bring the left foot out to the left a little. Bring the right foot forward and to the right just a little bit like you're standing on train tracks here. So the, the stance is a little more closed here for pyramid. We're going to inhale up to standing and again, either grab for opposite elbows behind the back or sit in prayer if that is easy and comfortable for you. We'll inhale and look up at the sky. So really, this is a very slight back bend really for the upper back. So my heart is shining up at the sky here. And then I'm gonna draw my hips back as I exhale and fold forward, long straight body over that left leg, bringing my hands down to the blocks to make sure that my body stays nice and long here. Chin is a little tucked to keep the cervical spine, the neck really nice and long. Straight spine here. And then when you're ready, we'll let the spine loosen over that left leg, folding forward. Where do I go from here? Yeah. Okay. So then yeah. from here, it's like, what do I do next? I can't there. remember. Thank you. All, right. All right, let's do it. That sounds good. Brian has helped me remember. So hands come down to either side of the left foot. You can bend the left knee as much as you need to here. We'll bring the right foot onto the toes and bring the left foot back to meet it. So here we are again in plank. Your choice, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. This time I will show knees, chest, chin again. Brian will show chaturanga. So on the next exhale, I'm bringing my knees down, my chest, and my chin, like an inchworm. And then inhaling up to cobra or upper facing dog at any height you like. And then exhaling, tucking the toes, coming through tabletop, lifting the hips for downward facing dog. And look back underneath of us. 
Maybe pedaling the heels down one after the other. And then when you're ready, we'll actually come down to hands and knees, draw the feet together, draw the knees together, and we'll bring the hips down to the heels for child pose, arms extended out in front of us. Inhaling deeply, exhaling completely. Yeah. From the back, from the back, yeah. From the back. So when you're ready, we're just going to start to walk up, to seated, and then we're going to take our legs. You can sit off to one side and just swing your legs out in front of you. We're doing legs. So this all they come all the way down. The, <laughs> come all the way down to the mat. We can keep the knees bent. Well, so we're going to do the same thing we did for the arms. We're now going to do for the legs. So you got a couple options here. What's that? Sort of. <laughs> well, similar. It's very similar. We open up the arms. Now we open up the legs. Yes. So we're going to take the legs up to take the, what do you call it? The shins to parallel like this. And you can have it. So you got a couple of ways to do this here. You can hold behind here if you need extra support. If you, uh, and then, uh, and or you can let them just hang in the air. And if you want an extra challenge, you can try to, press the knees together while you do this. We're just gonna rotate just the ankles. So just rolling them in a circle. So we're loosening up through the ankles here. And then when you feel like it, switch the direction, draw those ankle circles in the opposite direction. And then go ahead and let's pull the knees into the chest to hug everything in. And just rock a little side to side for a couple of seconds here. Then we'll come back to center. We'll bring the legs right back to that same position they're in. This time we're going to zip the knees together and keep the feet together. And this is going to be like we're drawing a big O on a wall with our feet. So we're just going to take the feet into this big O shape. A shape. It's the A's there, hun. <laughs> and then after a few, switch the direction you're drawing that circle. That O or that A, as we say in Baltimore. <laughs> then we're going to just go ahead and uh, bring the feet to the earth, keep the knees up, and let's just let the knees, you can even take the arms out to a T if you want. We're just gonna let the knees windshield wipe, wipe her side to side. So releasing any tension in the low back here. I guess we'll just do one. Yeah, one time. So let's draw the knees up towards the chest now. And arms can stay down by your sides or they can rest on your belly. That's fine too. I find that very comfortable. So from here, let's draw little circles with the knees on the side. So knees are kind of uh, reflections of each other. So my knees go down, out, and up. And I'm rotating through the hip socket here. I'm lubricating my hip joints even more. And then when you're ready, we'll switch the direction going the other way. So now knees come up towards the chest, open out, and then down and back together. So little circles on the sky with your knees. Knees are bent, toes are pointing possibly at the ground. And then this time, let's draw the knees in towards the chest. You can put your hands behind the knees. And we're just gonna rock up and down on the mat a little bit. If you're practicing outside, this is probably not so bad, but if you're inside or on this hard surface, feel free to rock on one side of the spine and then rock on the other side of the spine and do what you can to make sure the spine is happy. You can put a folded up blanket under the spine if you want, whatever you like. So once we come back to our backs with our knees in towards our chest, let's draw our legs up towards the sky here 
for uh, what do you call this one here? Legs up. Legs up. Why not? And we'll take one of our blocks, put it next to your hips. Actually, you know what? This is going to be even easier with the feet down. Let's put the feet down, pointing the knees up towards the sky. We'll lift the hips a little bit and put the block just on its lowest setting right under the hips. So if it was a book, you'd be sitting on the cover of the book. At this point, now we can inhale the legs up for supported legs up. This is possibly the most restorative inversion you can give yourself besides maybe legs up the wall. So feel free to stay here for a minute, enjoying the way this inversion feels. If you want to go further into shoulder stand, by all means, you can either come up to half shoulder stand by sort of lifting the legs over the head and pushing the hips up a bit. At this point, we'll bend the elbows and put the hands just under the hip bones here to use the hands to support our hips. And if you want to go to full shoulder stand from here, we'll just walk the hands down the back, drawing the legs together and pointing them up at the sky. Now remember, you can still stay down with legs up and hips on the block. It's wonderful and delicious. So if you want to come up to shoulder stand, now is your chance. And then from here, if you have a regular shoulder stand practice, and you're comfortable doing this, make sure not to look left or right, but let the legs come over the head towards the ground. So my toes are making their way towards the ground for plow posture. So here I am at plow with a great, great view of my belly and my legs and all that good stuff. If your feet have come all the way down to the ground on plow, you can release the hands from the hips, interlace the fingers and place them down the mat behind your back. And if this is easy for you, you can bend the knees, bringing them on either side of the ear for ear pressure pose. And if this is easy for you, you can bring the arms up behind the knees and grab the opposite elbows again for a loose posture, very Halloween appropriate posture, loose. And then when you're ready, no matter where you are, whether you're in shoulder stand, half shoulder stand, plow, ear pressure, or knees, we're going to bring the hands back to the hips. We'll inhale the feet just a little above the ground. And then let's slowly roll the hips down, going down the back vertebra by vertebra until our hips are resting on the mat again or possibly on your block again. If hips are on the block, feel free to lift the hips a little, take the block away, bring the hips down to the mat, and we're just going to slowly let the legs float their way down to the ground, like a leaf floating down from a tree. From here, as a counter stretch, let's come into fish just briefly, and then I'm going to take us into a wonderful thing. <laughs> so with fish, let's bend both knees. Bring, well, let's bend both knees, bring the soles of the feet to the mat, legs are together here. Let's lift the hips just an inch or two off the ground, and we'll put the palms face down underneath of the hips. So my butt is literally resting on the top of my hands here. Then I'm going to straighten both legs again. I'm going to bring the elbows under my body. So that means really opening out through the shoulders. I'm going to bend the elbows, looking up at my toes. So here I am in this very strange and awkward position, which will only become stranger. I'm going to lift my chin, looking behind me and aiming my head for the ground. And then as my head reaches the ground, the crown of the head rests gently on the ground. I'm going to open up through the chest, opening up my heart, stretching in the opposite direction that I might have just stretched in in shoulder stand. And then when you're ready, we'll tuck the chin back up, slowly looking at the toes and then rolling down the spine vertebra by vertebra. And now comes the delicious, wonderful block assisted posture. So from here, laying on the ground, let's just turn the hands and feet back and forth a little so toes can point out and in, out and in. So the legs are rotating a little bit from the hips. Hands can come palm face up, palm face down a little bit. So the arms are rotating from the shoulders. And if you feel comfortable doing this, gently turn the head from one side to the other. 
So we're getting a little stretch for the arms, the legs, and the neck. And then let's bend both knees, bringing the soles of the feet flat down on the mat. We're gonna do a bridge posture first, just unsupported, and then I will show you the uh, ecstasy that is supported bridge. So let's just inhale the hips up a little bit here, pushing into the feet. And then exhale the hips back down. Inhaling the hips up. Exhale the hips down. My knees are staying together as much as possible here. I mean, not smack dab next to each other, but you could if you want to experiment with this, like what muscles you have to activate to do this. You can take one of your blocks, put it between your knees. Maybe the thin side goes between your knees. And we'll inhale the hips up, holding the block in place. Exhale the hips down. One more time. This time we'll inhale the hips up, holding the block in place. Feel free to hang out here now with the hips up. So we're really pushing into the hips up and the hips are really coming up. Now, if you're practicing without a block or your block is between your knees and you don't feel like taking it out, you can bend both elbows and place the hands under the hips to support the hips. Otherwise, if you have a block, a spare block handy, doesn't matter what height it's at, let's put it underneath the hips. I would like a higher height, but small or medium is just as good here. And there we are. Our hips are being supported by a block. At this point, we'll just take this other block out. You can even just open the legs out and let it fall. And I'm going to straighten out my left leg towards the left corner of my mat. My hips are totally supported here. And then I'm going to straighten out my right leg towards the right corner of the mat. This might be a really intense psoas stretch for you, so take it at your pace. And if this feels comfortable and you'd like to go a little further, I'm going to take one arm up over my head and then the other arm up over my head. So I'm in a giant X shape with my hips pressing away from the earth. This is a really great stretch if you walk or run or bike or sit in a chair or drive a car or have legs. So <laughs> from here, let's now bring one arm back down by our side. We'll bring the other arm back down by our side. We'll bend one knee, doesn't matter where the knee is. We'll bend the other knee. We'll lift through the hips, draw the hips slowly back down, draw the knees in towards the chest, and just gently rock side to side for a second. So you can make circles with the knees, with your hands on your knees, if you like. This sort of gives you a massage for the sacrum. Oh, we are running now. <laughs> and lo and behold. Switch the, wait, switch the direction. Lo and behold, it's 6.15. So. All right, so we're ready to get into the end of class. Um, if you have any other movements you need, by all means, take them. I'm going to show you three options for Shavasana that incorporate, again, your blocks. So you can come into a traditional Shavasana if you like, where legs are out from the hips, maybe feet are around the edges of the mat, arms are about a foot or so away from each hip. Or you can come into bound angle, where the soles of the feet are touching. This is where you want two blocks. You'll put one under each knee, and you open out through the knees like this. So the blocks are supporting my knees here, and this is my resting posture. This is a nice posture for you if you feel like, again, your hips are too closed from walking or sitting or riding a bike or running or being a human. And then the last option, if you have just one block and you'd like to do a heart opener instead of this hip opener, we'll have the legs in traditional Shavasana legs, and we'll take one block. I'll show you where it goes in between the shoulder blades kind of right at the bottom of where the shoulder blades point out. I'm going to place this block under my back so my heart is shining up towards the sky. My head's resting on the ground. My arms are down by my sides or even out in a T. And my legs are down, down the mat. I'm just resting here for one second. And whatever is most comfortable for you today, feel free to take it. If you're wearing glasses and you like to take them off for Shavasana, feel free to put them somewhere to the side where they're safe. 
You know you're not going to roll over on them. Don't ask me how I know about that. And then we'll have a brief rest in the hopes that we do not get destroyed by bizarre late season mosquitoes. It comes with bat to eat them. Oh, good. Okay. Never mind. We've got a Halloween bat here. We're good. So just letting the breath become natural, softening in between the eyebrows, softening the edges of the eyes, the edges of the mouth, softening the heart, the hips, the hands and feet, softening the breath, and softening the thoughts as best we can. Start to let your awareness come back to your body. You can deepen your breath. You can start to get some motion into the body by moving the toes and the fingers, maybe rolling the wrists and ankles if you like. You can even turn the head side to side as well. So we're gonna get really long on the mat. So let's straighten out the legs, bring the feet together, press out through the heels, interlace the fingers, and then send the palms of the hands away from the crown of the your crown of your head behind you and inhale and stretch really long pressing out through the heels pressing out through the palms and then on an inhale you can pull everything in you can hug the knees into the chest you can do any sort of rocking you want to if you want to rock a little bit you can um, eventually we're going to make our way to seated so however you like to get there rocking up or you can roll off to one side and then slowly push yourself up Take your time coming up. We'll find ourselves in a comfortable seated position eventually. And you can bring your palms to touch at heart center. <laughs> and then um, What's your front of me, George? This is oh, yeah. for old time's sake. Yes. Another wonderful thing with blocks, you can always put them under your knees at seated too. So we'll inhale the arms up wide. Exhaling, pushing down. Inhaling the arms up wide again. Exhale, pushing down. And then this last time, if you want to join us in an ohm, we'll inhale the arms up wide, draw the palms together above our head. Exhale them down to your chest. But inhale deeply. And if you want to ohm with us, feel free. Uh... Thank you so much for practicing with us today. What a wonderful, auspicious treat it is to practice with you all outside. The light and the honors of light in all of you. Namaste. Thank you, thank you. This is our last outdoor class of the season. We will keep you in the loop as to when we come back outside in the spring. And in the meantime, this class is actually gonna to move to seven o'clock online on Tuesday. So if anybody wants to, uh, if you aren't on the email list for that and you wanna be on the email list for that, let us know. And we also teach a class online on Fridays too. So and that might be outside, but I have a feeling it's gonna rain this Friday. No, so. it's supposed to be very cold this Friday and rainy. Like <laughs> so in the that'll 50s. probably be inside. In fact, it's supposed to get down to 30. Thank you Friday so night. much. Where does that like?